What's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new DVD and Blu-ray update. Yes, I know it has been a long time since I've done one. If you guys remember in my May update, I said that I was going to be taking some time off from buying things due to the ridiculous postal issues I've been having. And I did. I basically took off a month and a half, so that's why there was no June update. And I started, I resumed buying things about mid-July. And so this is what I've accumulated over the month and a half uh, with Besides a couple things that had come in before that, that had taken like three months. Um, but yeah, this got a little bit ridiculous. I got a lot of stuff in here, so this update is rather massive, <laughs> let's just say so. Um, let's get right into it here. Let's start with a couple VHSs I got. I picked up this uh, Rejuvenator. Uh, I knew this one was actually quite hard to find. Uh, as far as I know, it doesn't have a DVD or Blu-ray release. This one really does need like a DVD or Blu-ray release because um, this is a good movie. This is really awesome stuff here. I think it does actually have a German release, I think, but um, maybe I'll have to look into getting that, but for two bucks I couldn't pass it up at all. Uh, I got one here called Proteus or something like that. I, I'm not even 100% sure on how to pronounce that, but I did find out after this does have a DVD release. It's like a budget one. My homeboy Matt from Union Horror Movies, he actually uh, picked up the DVD pretty much the same day I grabbed the VHS, which was very odd, but this one looks like a cheesy film from the 90s from 96, so I was like, why not? And this was sitting there, and I was like, I'm just not going to leave it on the shelf. Uh, TCM2, just what I needed, another edition of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I actually used to have this VHS, so kind of cool to get it back. I love the original Breakfast Club artwork there. It's pretty cool stuff, so that's what I grabbed for, for VHS. Let's get into these DVDs and then into the Blu-rays here. I got a shit ton of stuff here. It's ridiculous. Uh, first up for the DVDs from Unearth Films, a uh, film called Three Tears on Blood on bloodstained flesh um this is a americanized giallo and i actually really enjoyed this film i thought it was pretty damn cool um th i think the running time is going to throw off a little people on this one it runs close to two and a half hours long and uh it does kind of all come together quite nicely and stuff um overall it was a pretty decent watch so i do recommend this check it out definitely give it a shot it's a little bit expensive right now i will admit but uh, next up here is My Demon Within. I just got this in the mail the other day. I haven't even opened it, but I've been wanting to check this one out from Unearth Films also. Looks pretty damn cool. Uh, revenge is her middle name. I have heard this movie's not the greatest, but it is like a revenge. I think it's a rape revenge film. I'm not 100% sure, but it is a revenge film, so had to grab it. I love my revenge films. Um, another one from Unearth Films. Very, very cool. Got that one for super cheap. It was like five bucks. Uh, next up here is Footsteps. I actually popped this in the other night, watched like four minutes of it and got sidetracked, so I, I need to check this one out. Um, looked pretty cool, so, but uh, I believe this is a British film, again from Unearth Films, so that's pretty cool. And my man Derek, you guys saw in the unboxing video, if you watched that, he picked me up Mechanics. This is also from Unearth Films, so hammered off a bunch of Unearth Films off my list that I was looking to get, so that's pretty, ga pretty damn cool. Looking to check that one out. He also picked me up Normal from Richard Griffin. Um, yeah, man, I can't wait to check this one out, man. It's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, next up here, we got uh, Lake Fear. I heard this one is, like, pretty shitty. But I picked up the sequel first, and I heard it was actually kind of cool. So my OCD got the best of me, and I'm like, I need to get part one, even though it's not even related. So, but whatever. Lake Fear. And then, of course, here's Lake Fear 2, The Swamp. This one actually sounded pretty damn cool. Um, I just got this one also, too. So, yeah, Lake Fear 2. Uh, next up, I picked up a couple um, Aerodrome releases here. Uh, yeah, I got, like, two of them here. Uh, the Man with the Severed Head. I do have the Blu-ray of this uh, from the Redemption line under the Crimson title. It does come with this cut of the film, too. I grabbed this one because I got it from the same seller as the other one that I got, and this was only two bucks. And I was like, whatever, for two bucks I can't pass it up, it's kind of cool. Didn't have any of these Aerodrome releases, so I was like, why not? And then here's the other one I got, uh, also from 1976, that was from 76, is The Devil's Kiss, which is a really damn cool film. Um, yeah, man, this is pretty awesome shit, man, so... Very, very cool. I love these old Aerodrome releases, man. Like, Aero Video had their big booklets in there and shit. Pretty cool. They come and they're like, they're solid. Solid releases. And then I finally grabbed this from Umbrella, uh, to, the Dev to the Devil a Daughter, Hammer Films. Um, 
I love this movie, man. I haven't seen it in so many years, but uh, Christopher Lee, um, good shit, man. Good shit. Can't wait to revisit that one. Also from 1976. Uh, actually, next couple are from 76, too, if you guys... Listen to the podcast, we randomly drew 1976 as our next top 10 show, so I was grabbing some films I didn't own. Um, next up is a film called Embryo. I don't really know much about this one, but this was like 79 cents. <laughs> I was like, on this crazy, on guillotine films, it's like so budget. So budget, look at that thing. Just ridiculous, man. I think this is like an old DVD release, too. 2004, so it's pretty old. And then another really highly <laughs> kind of suspect DVD. Uh, Track of the Moon Beasts, also from 76. Now, this is some budget-ass shit. This was only like a dollar too, so I was like, why not? Let's grab this shit. Heard this movie's really bad, but... 1976 goodness. And I also got this one, The Keeper. This is a substance release, so if you're familiar with that company, you know that it's going to be super low budget. Yeah, uh, this one ha also has Christopher Lee in it. It's like a Canadian flick. Um, it's okay. It's It's kind of... I don't know. Maybe the transfer was kind of throwing me off in this one, but it, it has a little bit of issues with the story and stuff. Um, but, you know, it was alright, though. Uh, next up here from Inner Vision, we got Dark Harvest, and it comes with a bonus film, Escapes with Vincent Price, which I have not watched yet. I watched Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest was uh, really fun, man. A great shot on video film from the 90s, I believe, from 1990. So, if you're into shot on video and stuff, I'd love that intervision's dropping all these uh, very obscure shot on video films it's awesome to see man really really cool stuff uh next up here we got sauna uh this is released by ifc films um this is a pretty interesting film from finland uh we reviewed this on the podcast it's a little bit confusing uh you definitely have to use your lid a little bit when trying to figure out what the hell is going on in this one but it's a pretty cool film it's beautiful it's very very well shot i think the story is a little bit contrived at times but uh listen to the review i think we did a pretty good job with it but definitely a very very beautiful watch loved it for the most part uh blood hunters picked this one up cheap uh gave it a watch i didn't really care for it i thought the story was pretty cool in this but they just didn't they didn't take the story where it should have went in my opinion i thought that um i thought that they just didn't execute it properly at all it, it just didn't it just wasn't that great it just wasn't that great at all definitely don't recommend that one uh abattoir this was really actually quite interesting i thought the third act in this one was a little bit a little bit crazy but leading up to it though was really good um some good performances in this one uh from uh what's her face um Jessica Loudis, man, beautiful. It's crazy, man. She totally has this like 1940 look to her. It's pretty cool stuff. But um, I thought it was cool, man. Um, Lynn Shay's in this one. She plays this really creepy lady. It's pretty awesome stuff. But I thought it was okay. I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it was pretty cool. Uh, Tears of Cali. Uh, yeah, man, this is an anthology film that I haven't checked out yet. I've heard pretty good things about this one, so I'm looking forward to checking this out uh, from the director of Masks. Masks was a film that came out a few years ago, got a release last year from Real Core Releasing, and so had to check out some more stuff by this director. Can't wait to check this one out, but uh, I love Masks, one of my favorite films from last year, like absolutely. If you haven't seen that film, check it out. Totally awesome stuff. Uh, then we got Freshwater, have not seen this one yet, I haven't heard good things, but you know, it's a croc film, so eh, why not? Give it a shot. Uh, this one right here, Undead or Alive. I, my buddy actually gave gave me this for free at his shop. He's like, no one's ever going to buy that, so you can just have it. <laughs> I was like, awesome. Cool, man. Um, this one's actually been recommended to me a couple times because it's like Western horror film, and they just don't make a lot of these, so they're kind of intriguing to me. The odd thing about this film is that it has Chris Kattan in it. Chris Kattan's in a, in a Western horror film. That is bizarre. Really, really bizarre. Uh, next up here from Brink. We have The Devil's Woods. Um, this one was pretty cool. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting. It's it kind of your run-in-the-mill type slasher thing. I mean, there's a little bit of lore in there and stuff, but it was kind of cool. It was it was pretty decent for a very, very independent film. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I definitely recommend giving it a watch. And then last up for the DVDs here, we got uh, The Vinegar Syndrome uh, DVD slash booklet. It's, you know, comes in this two-pack thing here. Basically, just a highlight reel of you know all the video of uh, all the films that they've released and shit. Pretty cool stuff. I love my compilation videos, as you guys probably know if you watch this channel. I absolutely love them. Um, 
And the book's awesome too, man. It's got, you know, all the cover arts and everything that they've released. But this thing was like $9.99. I was like, I can't pass it up. Pretty cool stuff. But Vinegar Syndrome always knocking everything they do out the park. So yeah. Um, yeah. Rip through the DVDs. That is the DVDs. On to the Blu-rays. Yeah. All right. So getting back into the update here and forgot my beer over there. So charge to everybody. Yeah. Mmm. That's some good stuff right there. All right, let's get into the Blu-rays here. First up, just a, sta uh, a few standard releases. I picked up Don't Kill It with Dolph Lundgren. Um, I love this movie. I've watched this movie three times now. I love the premise, man. It's about this, this fucking insane demon that basically invades your body. And if you kill the person that the demon's invaded, it just goes into your body. So hence the title, Don't Kill It. Um, it's pretty unique on how they have to kill it and stuff like that. It's It's pretty funny, too. It's not like a full-blown comedy and shit, but there's some awesome gore in this film. Dolph Lundgren's performance is pretty, <laughs> pretty wood-like at times, but he's he's awesome in it though. I really enjoyed the hell out of this film. There's a great scene in this uh, in this church, I guess. Yeah, it's totally awesome, man. Pretty cool stuff. Recommend Don't Kill It. Love the hell out of that one. Uh, upgraded Neon Demon. I had the DVD. I picked up for two bucks. I got this one for five, brand new. So I was like, why not? Uh, finally got around to getting Get Out. Um, I enjoyed it, man. I thought it was actually really well done. Uh, pretty cool stuff, man. I mean, what can you say about Get Out that hasn't been said already? I mean, everyone knows about this film, but it was good. It was good. Uh, Forbidden Planet. This one came out in 1956. Very, very fun kind of sci-fi horror film. Um, <laughs> I'm really digging the 50 sci-fi horror films right now. I don't know what it is, man. I just had a craving for watching these things, but this is really fun stuff. Forbidden Planet. Uh, you guys saw this in the, the unboxing I did from Derek, but Night is Something Strange. If you haven't seen this film, definitely give it a shot. It's pretty fucking awesome. Got some good scenes, some good laughs in this one and shit. Highly recommend it. The artwork, super awesome on this one. Yeah. Uh, also in that package was Circus of the Dead from Billy Pond. I can't wait to check this one out. It's like number one on my list right now to watch. I've been dying to check this one out because it's been, you know, this film is coming out for so long. So, but yeah, I can't wait to check out Circus of the Dead. Love the artwork too. Great stuff. Finally upgraded my DVD uh, attack pack to the Blu-ray. 10 bucks. I'm like, I, I gotta do it, man. I absolutely love this franchise. I never realized how much I love this franchise until we covered it on the podcast and it turns out that I like all five films and I'm looking forward to the sixth one and the TV series the reincarnation of the TV series I guess because the first rendition only lasted like one season which I've actually never seen before um, but these are fun as hell films man like if you if you know if you've seen the Tremor films you know what I'm talking about man you can't beat them they're pretty fun uh, another one from that pack was Cat Sick Blues the homeboy, uh, Horace Ball, was raving about this film, and I really can't wait to check this one out. Um, I talked about it in the unboxing, so, but its storyline in this one just sounds insanity. And the, I, I really dig this cover art. It's simple, but it's it's just effective. It's cool, man. Uh, next up here from Shameless, we got All the Colors of the Dark, uh, directed by Sergio Martino. This is one that I've been waiting to come out for so long. DVD has been out of print forever, and first time hitting Blu-ray. The Blu-ray looks pretty good. Probably the best it's going to look, I assume. I don't know. Um, but it's a good film. It's very psychedelic and strange at times. It's um, it's kind of got this cult, the satanic cult thing happening in there. It's like a satanic cult giallo. It's pretty interesting, man. A lot of good cinematography in this one. Uh, editing techniques and shit like that. Very fun film, man. George Hilton's in this. Edward Fenich. Uh, she's probably the most beautiful woman to ever grace this beautiful planet of ours. She's just awesome. I love her. So, check that one out. Pretty awesome stuff. Just got this one in yesterday. The Zodiac Killer. Um, <laughs> I don't really know much about this one. And I didn't even know that it was coming with a bonus film. Another Son of Sam from 1977, which is really cool. So, you get two films for the price of one. Um, I've heard it's pretty standard stuff, you know, um, based on, I guess, the Zodiac Killer. But uh, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Artwork's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, next up here from Master Video is Hack o Lantern. This is an this is a friggin' awesome release, man. I really enjoyed the shit out of this film. I'd never seen it before. Believe it or not, I'd never seen this film before. I'll fully admit that. And I, I loved it, man. I thought it was such a blast, man. This is a great film to watch around, you know, in October, Halloween time, man. It's pretty interesting. It's a strange one. It's a strange film. It's not... I was expecting it to be a little bit more run-of-the-mill, but it's kind of got a different 
it's got a different approach to it. It's pretty cool, man. But what an awesome release by a Massacre video. I'm glad they're doing these awesome side loaders, man. That's pretty cool shit. Um, next up here is a black field for Lisa. You've seen this one in the unboxing also from Massimano Dalamano. Can't wait to check this one out. Never seen it before. It's going to be awesome. Uh, also, X Cross. Uh, some good ass Asian stuff right here. Um, yeah, man, this this one just looks batshit awesome. And one that su surprised the hell of me was One Million Years BC. Yeah, man, I can't wait to check this out. Fucking Raquel Welch, awesome. She's so awesome. Uh, from the film detective Voodoo Black Exorcist, I actually the last review I did on my channel was actually this film. Uh, this was some pretty interesting stuff from 1974, uh, one of the greatest years in horror, in my opinion, 1974 just has an abundance of, like, amazing horror films that happen to come out in, uh, in 1974, um, but yeah, Black, definitely give this one a shot, man, these Film Detective Blu-rays are very, very cheap, so give them a shot, man, you know, for what you're getting, I mean, it's a good transfer, probably the best it's ever going to look, to be honest, they, they specialize in doing, um, like, public domain films and restoring them, and I, I'm assuming this was a public domain film, but they did a great job with the transfer, looks awesome, so that's very cool, uh, next up from Intervision here, we got Feed the Light, uh, a HP Lovecraft, based on an HP Lovecraft story, this is fucking awesome, honestly, man, one of the better films I've seen this year, this is really cool stuff, um, I'm assuming this is probably going to count for 2017, but uh, yeah, man, um, this is a great quote on the back. A hypnotic, dreamy experience. It's impossible to avoid comparisons with Eraserhead. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Check this out. Love the shit out of that one. And I, I like the cover, man. I, I do, man. It's cool. Uh, next up from uh, Severin, Bag Boy, Lover Boy. Oh, shit, man. This movie was, like, amazing. It was so good. The lead character in this film does such a great job. It's it's basically about this dude that's kind of, he's odd looking, he's he's just an odd dude, you know, he's weird looking, he talks funny, he works down at this hot dog stand, and one day this guy approaches him and says that he wants to f uh, take pictures of him, uh, kind of like fetish pictures. Anyway, so he, he takes the job, and this photographer ends up going out of town, and he breaks into his place, and he starts acting like this photographer, and he's starts luring in these girls and taking fetish pictures and shit and it's it's like one of the most uncomfortable films you could possibly ever watch but it's so fascinating at the same time it's like you know uncomfortable when you're watching like napoleon dynamite like that character is just odd and you just kind of feel bad for him it's what it is when you're watching this film it's like kind of like the same type of character but shit man this was a really really good film i loved it great ending too great ending totally good stuff one of the highlights of the year for myself uh, next up here is Future Shock, the story of 2000 AD. I have not watched this documentary yet. Um, yeah, man, I'm intrigued a little bit on this one, man. I mean, it's a you know a documentary about comics and things like that. Um, I don't know. I, I love my documentary, so I give that one a shot. Also from Severin, again from Severin, here's Blackenstein. Blackenstein is fun. Um, it's not as good as like Blackula and Scream, Blackula Scream, but it's fun. It's it's a ridiculously fun film and. Uh, Another gem, another black exploitation horror film from the early 70s, man. You can't pass it up, so Blackenstein, awesome stuff. Uh, from 88 Films on the Asian line, we've got uh, The Oily Maniac from 1976. Uh, as soon as we, I actually wanted to get this one anyways, but as soon as we uh, rang up 1976 for the, the podcast, I instantly went and ordered this, The Oily Maniac. I was like, well, that was just the kick in the ass to grab this, but this one just looks bizarre, so... Yeah, I was surprised actually to get this so fast from the UK because I'm still waiting on like a bunch of Blu-rays that, that have been shipped in like July. So the shit's happened to me again, fuckers. But anyways, enough with that. Ten Little Indians uh, released by Scorpion. Um, the Ten Little Indians story, we're all familiar with that. We've seen a 100,000 renditions of the story. This one's no different. It's got an all-star cast. Oliver Reed's in this film. The list goes on and on. It's got a voiceover from Orson Welles and this and shit. Um, it's pretty entertaining, actually, man. I mean, it's worth it just to watch it for Oliver Reed's performance. I mean, Oliver Reed is really good in pretty much everything he does. And I'm pretty sure this is a... Uh, was it 74? I don't know if he was completely shit-faced in, in these years. <laughs> but, I don't know, man. Every once in a while, when you watch an Oliver Reed film, you can, like, tell that he's drunk in it. It's pretty funny. Um, but, yeah. Pretty cool stuff. I enjoyed that. Good film. Next up here from Garage House Pictures, we've got The Satanist. 
Uh, I came across this man, I was at Sonic Boom in Toronto, and this is like the only Blu-ray that I picked up. I bought a shitload of music, but this is the only one that I found. But man, they had a great collection, or a great selection of stuff, but can't wait to check this one out, man. It's from 1969, and, or 1968, 69, well, no, it's 1968. There's a, a bonus feature on here from 1969 uh, called Sisters in Leather, so that's pretty cool, man. Two films for the price of one, but The Saintness, can't wait to check that one out. And then next bunch here from Code Red. First up here, we got Warlock Moon. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting. It comes with two different cuts of the film, uh, the 83 minute and the 89, which is like the longer TV cut of it. And uh, I watched the 80, the standard 83 edition last night, and the transfer looked pretty good. It was it was better than the Shriek Show DVD. Um, but I did, I kind of flipped through the, the TV cut of it. Man, the transfer looks like it's just a VHS. It's fucking brutal, man. The thing that was interesting about when I got this release was I noticed on the back it's Code Red, if you can see that, and Shout Factory. So I don't know if Shout Factory acquired the rights to this and then let Code Red release it, kind of like what they did with Evil Speak and what was the other release? I can't remember, but that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen one in a long time that had Shout Factory on the back. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, Warlock Moon is still one of those very odd films where the story is very simple, but it's still confusing. It's still kind of like what the fuck is, how is this shit happening? <laughs> you know, it's like one of those type of films, but it's fun, man. I enjoy it, man. Uh, next up is the Canucksploitation classic, in my opinion, um, Ghost Keeper. I love this movie. I have like a weird obsession with this film. I have it like on all formats, but um, I don't really need, I didn't, I don't know why I upgraded from the DVD because the transfer is maybe a little bit better. I don't know. Um, that's kind of the thing with Code Red. I mean, if you have the DVDs, I'm not 100% sure that it's worth your while to upgrade a lot of these things because they don't seem to do the greatest transfers. But um, I'm pretty sure all the features are the same too, if I'm not mistaken. But um, it's pretty interesting. I was actually watching a little bit on this and it was saying, they were talking about the, the director, Jim uh, Marchuk, uh, Canadian guy. He um, They ran out of money halfway through filming this film and he basically threw the second half of the script out and just started filming shit. He just started winging it, making stuff up as they went. So that's why this film kind of feels like two different films. Especially knowing that, when you watch it, you're like, oh yeah, because it kind of flips itself right in the middle of the film. And But, you know, it's ne it never bothers me. I, I think it's actually kind of cool the way it goes. It's just, it's a strange oddity, but the atmosphere in this film is so damn thick, man. I, it's great. I love Ghost Keeper. It's so good. I love it. Uh, next up here is another Sergio Martino film, The Great Alligator. Now I've heard, th I mean this transfer has to be better than the Maya communication DVD that I have. So I was, this is probably worthy of an upgrade. I haven't opened it yet, but uh, I just watched this film in my, in the Italian marathon I did with the homeboy Godzilla. So, but I can't wait to check it out um, again because this movie cracks me up. There's so many funny parts in this film. It's ridiculous. And there's so many on-screen kills. It's bloody as hell. Um, if you like good croc films, Great Alligator. Good stuff, man. Or alligator. There's tons of different titles for it. Next up, One Dark Night with the slip cover, um, which I actually really dig that artwork. I think that's pretty damn cool. Of course, it has the standard artwork on there. Um, you know, as far as you know, an upgrade goes from the Shriek Show DVD. I want to say it does look better than the Shriek Show DVD. I mean, I didn't do it like a side by side or anything, but and I haven't watched that DVD in a long time, so. Um, but I mean, even with that said, man, it's still, it's very soft looking. It's a very soft looking film. Um, the film itself is, it's fun. It's a very strange film. It's very slow. There's a lot of story in this film until about the last 20 minutes when things kind of pick up and stuff. I wish there was a little bit more action in this one. I think it would have been an overall better product, but I don't know, man. It's still a fun film for what it is, but I always want to like this one more. It's one of those films and I'm sure we have, we all have those type of films where we watch over and over again hoping it might get better or something. This is one of those films for myself. One Dark Night. It's okay. Of course, with Meg Tilly, Jennifer Tilly's older sister. Is Meg Tilly older? Yeah, I, can't, I don't remember. And Adam West. Fucking Batman. Uh, next up here, we got Deadly Dreams. This was a cool release, man. Um, this one I don't think had any releases before, as far as I know. Uh, from 19, I might have had a VHS, but... Um, from 1988, kind of like a... Uh, in, in a sense, it's it, it's not really a Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff, but it has to do with dreams and things like that. It's not like the greatest film in the world, but I really enjoyed it. There was something odd about this film that I really enjoyed. It was kind of cool. I liked the lead in that, in that one. 
cool stuff. And that was also from Code Red. Another one from Code Red, Twisted Nightmare. I'm so happy to finally see a release of this film. Um, I actually have a one sheet of this film that uh, Homeboy sent me one time, which I need to frame still, but I was happy as hell. It's not the greatest slasher film in the world, but it's super fun. I don't know. It's one of those ones I like to watch, man. I've watched this Blu-ray twice already. Uh, it's cool, man. I like it. It's just, it's cheesy-ass 80s fun, man. We year did this film? 1987? Yeah. So, another one from Code Red here, Simon King of the Witches. Um, I think this, think this one had a Dark Sky Films DVD release, if I'm not mistaken, which I never had. That one just kind of bypassed me. I've never seen this movie, so I'm intrigued on this one. I had to pick it up because, you know, I was whatever. And this is this one is another one, can't fucking talk, that has Shell Factory on the back. So another dual release from Shout and Code Red, which is pretty cool. Now the screenshots on the back make it look pretty good, man. Like it looks pretty clean on the back, so but I like my witch films. Actually, I love my witch films, so that's pretty cool. Last up for the Code Reds here, we got Torture Dungeon. Uh yeah, man, another Andy Milligan film. If you've seen an Andy Milligan film, you've pretty much seen them all. They are... Andy Milligan is one of those directors that... He's just terrible. He's just a terrible director. Um, and he does bad films, but, like, in a good way. He does bad films in a good way. I don't know what it is, man. He's kind of like... He's like the... Op he's kind of like a... I don't know how to describe him, but... I don't know. Torture Dungeon. Still need to check that one out, but... Yeah. Uh, next up here is uh, Galaxy of Horrors, anthology film based on like, you know, uh, kind of like sci-fi horrors, like all space horror stuff. I know that, I, I think a bunch of these um, shorts were done like years ago and this is, thing was just kind of all put together and stuff. Uh, if you've seen Minutes Past Midnight, it's from the same people that put that together. So it, it really does have that same kind of vibe. Like these things are not that low. I mean, they're low budget, but they're really good looking low budget shorts and stuff. And to be honest, I thought this was very entertaining. I did. I wasn't bored at all. There was a couple shorts that were like, blah, but you know, there is like eight of them or nine of them. So, you know, you're usually going to get that in these anthologies, but overall pretty good, man. I gave it like a seven out of 10. It was pretty fun stuff. Actually. I think I do prefer minutes past midnight, but I love me some anthology films. Can't pass them up. So Yeah. Continue along here, man. We got uh, from Criterion. We got Dreams um, from Kurosawa. Um, yeah, Derek, thank you again for this one. Can't wait to check that out. And then we got In the Realm of the Senses from 1976. Talked about this one in the uh, in the unboxing. I can't wait to check this out. It just looks so freaking bizarre, man. It looks crazy weird. So yeah, I don't know what to expect from that. Uh, from Vestron, we got The Unholy. I love this film, and I haven't checked out the Blu-ray yet, but I reviewed this, I believe, in my 88 series, and uh, I had imported the the uncut version from the UK, uh, which I believe the it's not the same version on the 8-pack. I think that is a cut version on there, so, and I believe this is the uncut version. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I am really, I've always enjoyed this film, man. It gets a lot of hate, and I generally, sometimes these type of films rub me the wrong way, these kind of... Um, polarizing, uh, you know, kind of religious theme type films, but this is a good one, man. I, I actually like The Unholy. It's cool. Uh, next up here from Mondo Macabro, we got Inquisition, uh, Paul Nashi flick. This is just awesome. I'd never seen this movie before, and I absolutely love this movie. It was so good. Like, this is the year of Paul Nashi without a doubt. He's getting, so many of his films are getting great releases. It's just, outstanding outstanding so i can't wait for the rest of the nashy stuff to come out there out this year man it's gonna be so awesome but if you haven't seen inquisition definitely give it a shot man it's uh, really good if you like your spanish horror good stuff uh next up here from 88 films is beyond the darkness uh from joe diamato man i love this movie i've said it a million times it's i this is one of those movies how I like to describe it, it makes me feel dirty when I watch it. It's like this really kind of dark, romantic horror film. It's, I mean, that's probably a bad description, but it's, it's got a little bit of that in there, but it's got great gore and it's just, it's, you know, necrophilia. It's got all these type of things going on in this one. It fuck some nasty, nasty gore and shit, but this relationship between our lead here and um, his, uh, I guess, housekeeper or whatever, is fucking bizarre. This is such a bizarre film. I absolutely love Beyond the Darkness. It's, it's a crazy-ass film. 
Um, <laughs> it's, it's just so sleazy, man. I love it. Beyond the Darkness, uh, Severin just put out the third edition of that too, which apparently is awesome too. Uh, getting into some Screen Factory stuff, and this is like the first Screen Factory stuff I've bought in a while. It's crazy. But we got the Bat People. Uh, fun film. I really enjoyed this one. 1974, of course. It's cheesy. The title's a little bit misleading. I, I, I will definitely say that. Um, there's not, like, bat people in this one. And especially, like, that. <laughs> so, it's basically just about a dude that gets bit by a bat and starts turning into a bat and shit. Starts terrorizing. Um, I had fun with it, man. I had fun with it. You know, it's, it's, it was pretty good. Uh, another one I had a lot of fun with from Screen Factory. Here's The Man from Planet X. Super fun stuff, man. Great transfer on this, by the way, also. Uh, really short film. This one only runs 71 minutes. But I loved it, man. This is sci-fi shit, man. 1951. I don't know, man. I got like a soft spot for it right now. I think you're going to see lots of sci-fi stuff. Sci-fi horror films from the 50s in, in next updates and stuff. Because I've just, I've got a craving for it. Pretty cool. Uh, one that I really enjoyed from last year. This one got a little bit of hate. But I enjoyed the shit out of it. Beyond the Gates. It's, you know, it's not trying to be like an entire 80s throwback. It just kind of has that feel. More of like a 90s thing, you know, with those VHS horror video game, board game things that you that play back in the day. I never really played any of those, but some of them were apparently pretty crazy. But that's kind of what this one is. It's about these, these two brothers that, uh, after their father goes missing, they, they show up in the hometown to basically get rid of his stuff. And they, he owns like a video store. And which is a very cool scene. I love the scenes where they're going through the video store. It's this crazy store. And they come across this board game, and it's it may be linked to his father's disappearance and stuff. And it's pretty cool, man. Um, the kind of the gatekeeper that's in this film uh, is played by uh, um, Barbara Crampton, and you know she looks fucking fantastic in this film too. Just really, really good stuff. But I, I liked it, man. It's got some pretty good gore. It's it's fun. It's not like mind blowingly good or anything, but it was good enough for me to pick up. So yeah, that was cool. Uh, next up is Windows. I'd never seen this one before. Uh, I will say the music was good by Emoni Morricone. Um, <laughs> I have to say, man, the storyline is pretty basic in this one. It's about a woman that kind of gets home invaded and attacked and stuff, and then just kind of goes from there. But not really a lot happens in this one, and I feel like the story just never, it never gets to where it wants to go with this one. I found it really kind of boring. I didn't really care for Windows whatsoever. I won't lie. I was very disappointed with it. Um... Night of the Sorcerers and Laura Lee's Grasp. Uh, this is a... Oh, man. Uh, Amando de Asorio. Asorio. Uh, double feature. The guy that did the the Blind Dead films. It's so awesome that these films are getting released on a double feature nonetheless. You know, that's totally cool. Night of the Sorcerers. It was okay. It was okay. The women looked awesome in the film. It was, it was alright. Kind of cheesy at times, but... Laura Lee's Grasp was awesome, man. Again, beautiful ass woman in this one, but Laura Lee's Grasp is definitely the highlight on this double feature, but uh, good shit, man. Good Spanish films. Um, next up here from Scream Factory also is Slither. I was kind of he and haw on this one. I, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to upgrade it. I had I have the DVD, and I wasn't 100% sure because I hadn't seen it in years, and I remember liking the film, but I was I was afraid it was going to be one of those ones I was going to rewatch, and it was not going to live up to it. And, you know, Spending $27 on a fucking collector's edition is ridiculous, but when I hadn't seen it in a while, and I really enjoyed it again. It was fun as hell, and I do like this cover art, man. I think it's actually pretty damn cool. I I have to say, man, these, these little alien things in there, they look like pieces of shit floating in the bathtub. I'm not going to lie. It looks like she dookied it all in, in that bathtub. It's awesome. Here's the, uh, <laughs> the, the original artwork there. But I have to say, it was fun. I really enjoyed it, man. Um, fucking Michael Rooker in this film. <laughs> I forgot how awesome he is. He's totally awesome in this. Good shit. Love Slither. Good stuff. And to the release of the year, in my opinion, well, for myself anyways, is by far the Paul Nashie collection. And I'm even saying it over the Phantasm Arrow box and stuff, but this is an amazing release, man. Amazing stuff, man. Um, if, you, if you don't have this, you got to get this because... Before it goes out of print or some stupid thing, but you got part two coming out later this year, which is awesome. It's got Yeti and the Werewolf on it. Films on here, Horror Rises from the Tomb, Vengeance of the Zombies, Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll, Human Beast, and Night of the Werewolf, and all the films are fantastic. Really, really good stuff, man. Um, Human Beast was a first-time watch for me, and I'm so happy to finally see that film. It, it's It's got a great ending. It's got a great ending. Um, 
But all the films in here are so good, man. It's really, really good. Um, all the discs come on, you know, they're separate. They're five discs. They're just all the standard, you know, all the artwork and stuff's the same. If you guys haven't seen these, but yeah. At least they're all in their separate discs and stuff. And it comes with a nice little booklet. Nice write-ups and stuff in here, too, so... Uh, which I like reading about Paul Nashie. Um But yeah, I just, I can't believe that we're getting a volume two so quick. That just absolutely blows my mind. So that was a treat to have. Uh, next up here from Arrow, I picked up Chud. Finally got around to picking this up, man. You know, I've always enjoyed Chud. I mean, it's not an amazing film. In my opinion, it may, might be a little bit overrated. People always talk about this film like it's it's amazing, but um, it's fun though. I, I really enjoy the storyline to this film too. It's kind of cool. I just wish, you know, you know, you get to see the, the chuds a little bit more. Um, that's always been my biggest complaint with this film, but it's still really cool, and it's awesome to see John Goodman in a, I guess not really a cameo, I guess he was kind of starting out at the time, but he's got a scene in the end of the film, which is pretty cool, which I always forget about. Um, but yeah, good film, man. Daniel Stern, it's awesome in this film. Good stuff. No, chud. Uh, next up here from Arrow, also we got the reanimator awesome addition this thing is a fucking brick I don't know why they didn't put a Bride of Reanimator with this kind of brick packaging that one was flimsy I don't know it's strange but this is cool man because you get the uh, integral version and of course the unrated version I'd never seen that version before um, so it was cool because I'm really really familiar with this film I've seen this film hundreds of times one of my favorite films so it's cool to see the other footage and it's interesting because it does add to the story. It definitely slows down the film, but it adds to the story and there's some pretty cool scenes, but some of the scenes are like almost out of place. There's a scene where uh, Herbert West is, you know, he's talking to Barbara Crampton and the other fucking guy, I can't remember his name. Anyways, he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the Dean, blah, blah, blah. But just, there was a scene before that that was put into that version where they were like having dinner with the Dean. So it, it, it didn't make sense. So like if you watch that version first, you'd be like, this movie's ridiculous, but, um, but it was cool to see those those added scenes in there, and it's quite a bit longer, too, from what I gather. Um, I can't remember, but it's quite a bit longer, but good stuff, man. Awesome addition. Crazy features. Brick. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, next up here, also from Arrow, we have The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Spe special edition, man. I mean, everyone in their grandma showing this shit off, but I just love this art. It's so awesome, man. And I do, man. I really like the new commissioned artwork for it. It's awesome. You know, it's got a poster and shit like that. So, but Bird with Crystal Plumage, what can I say, man? It's one of my favorites. Favorite Argentos. I love this Giallo. It's so good. And Arrow, again, knocks it out of the park with a beautiful, beautiful edition. Can't go wrong. And again, from Arrow with another amazing edition, which is Phenomena. Uh, of course, comes with, you know, three cuts of the film. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I don't need, like, Creepers, I don't know why anybody would actually watch Creepers. I mean, if you're familiar with that one, if you kind of grew up with that version, you might watch it again, but it's so cut and just heavily shorter. <laughs> um, but yeah, great addition, man. Absolutely love this thing, man. It's just so good, like, just, ugh, even the booklet, like, the book it just looks so good. Creepers artwork right there, and of course, Phenomena. Yeah, man, like, these guys are killing it. Arrow just doing big things with all their all the releases, man. It's ridiculous. So, but yeah, um, that's it for the horror Blu-rays. I do have a little bit of non-horror here, so we'll get to that in a second. Oh yeah, some non-horror stuff here. Uh, big shout out to my man NES Ruler Twenty Two, also known as Jeremy, for sending me this over. He, uh, of course, located a very good sale, so I sent him some money to pick me up this because it was like dirt cheap. And that's Streets of Fire from. Uh, uh, Walter Hill? Walter Hill directed this one? Uh, yeah, Walter Hill, fuck. Um, yeah, man, I'd never seen this film before. This is so good. So good, man. I love the shit out of this, man. The music's fantastic in this film. It's just, it's got great characters. The whole, the whole movie's ridiculous in itself, but it's too bad this film never did better because it was actually supposed to be a trilogy and they only ever did this film, so that's kind of a shame, but, uh, but yeah, William Defoe and oh man, just such a awesome. If you've never seen Streets of Fire, highly recommend. It's just so 80s. It's awesome. Um, finally upgraded my Snapper Case DVD of Deliverance to Blu-ray. Um, excellent film. Excellent film. Um, what can I say, man? You know, the transfer is pretty good, I guess, for Warner Brothers catalog title that they never seem to put in work on their transfers, but it was okay. It's pretty good. Um it's deliverance. Enough said. Check out the podcast for a full length review. And uh, also, we paired it up with Southern Comfort. This is actually a Patreon pick. 
And um, this is actually, I thought it was pretty cool, man. Like, no problems. I, I mean, I had a couple problems with this film. It's got some ridiculous moments in it and stuff, but very atmospheric, man, set in like the bayou and shit like that. Pretty cool stuff. I just love the back here. It says a perfect partner to deliverance. Like, how perfect was that right there? That was actually done by, not on purpose, actually, to, to pair these up, but um, Powers Booth, man. Steals the show in this. So good. Next up here is Raquel Welch in Hanny Calder. Yeah, the homeboy uh, Derek sent me this one over. Can't wait to check this out. Just looks looks awesome. Raquel Welch and like it was so good. Uh, upgraded this one too, man, because I fucking love this movie. Absolutely love this movie. I, I got the DVD for like two bucks and ended up getting the, the Blu-ray for four. So I was like, whatever. I think it was four anyways. William Freakin, back with doing a great film and Killer Joe. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Absolutely murders this film, man. He's so good in this film, man. Ah, oh, shit, dude. Gina Gershon's muff in this one. You can't go wrong with that. That's pretty damn cool. But just, he's bat, he's batshit awesome in this. It's great. Killer Joe rocks. I don't care what anyone says, man. It's fucking amazing. Love it. Upgraded Menace Society for the right price. It was dirt cheap. One of my favorites, like, hood films. Uh, it's such it's such an emotional film. It's so well done. Great soundtrack, everything. I wish I had to use the original cover art, though. I'm going to keep my DVD. Because this cover art sucks. And apparently it's a director's cut. And I, you know, I gotta, like, watch it again. I got, I gotta, I don't, I don't know what else is thrown in. It's, like, only a minute different. So I'm, it might be, like, one extended scene or something. I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna have to look into it. But, but yeah, I don't know. Amazing. O-Dog's badass. We all know that. Another upgrade. Uh, Boys in the Hood. Um, I have that, like, that gold DVD set that came out years and years ago. But, Again, for like super cheap, like seven bucks. I'm like, why not just grab the Blu-ray of uh, Boys in the Hood? Again, amazing. Doughboy, yeah, awesome. Had to upgrade this one too, and this was fantastic. Um, Juice, man. I, I was just so surprised to see a Blu-ray of this, man, considering this is Paramount. Paramount doesn't seem to put a lot of the stuff on Blu-ray from the back catalog, but, you know, this is classic stuff right here, man. Love the soundtrack again. Um, you know, Tupac in this film. It's great, man. Uh... Awesome. What can I say about Juice? It's wicked. Still haven't checked this one out, man. From Umbrella, Firewalker. This is like one of the only Chuck Norris films I needed to complete my Chuck Norris collection. Up until like the mid-90s is when I just consider everything after that to be not even worthy kind of thing. But um, So everything up and yeah. So this was like the last one I needed. So I love me some Chuck Norris. And this is one I've never seen. I think this is the only Chuck Norris film I haven't seen. So got to check it out. Got that famous, famous, everyone seems to be talking about this triple pack because it's so cheap. A Blind Fury, Silent Rage, and White Line Fever. Uh, I'd never seen Blind Fury before, believe it or not, with Rugger Hauer. And uh, it's such a goofy film. I, was, I wasn't expecting it to be a comedy, I guess. And I was watching it, I was like, it just turns all silly and shit. I'm just like, what the fuck? It's got like the boy from, uh, oh, what TV show is that? Um, Step by Step, I think he was in it. I remember him from that TV series. Uh, but yeah, Rooker Howard plays like, he's like a blinded, um, veteran from the Vietnam War and shit, and it, it's ridiculous. Silent Rage is fun, good Chuck Norris stuff right there, and I've never seen White Line Fever, but I was surprised to see it was from the 70s. I thought maybe they'd keep along with the 80s stuff, but, but yeah, I'll check that one out sooner and later. Pretty cool. And I gotta say, man, the transfer is pretty good on this. <laughs> I was like amazed, man. Mill Creek, cheap ass and good transfers. Fuck, better than Code Red. Uh, next up here, we got uh, Over the Top. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen this movie a million times. Had to grab it, man. I was just, I was bored one day and I saw it sitting there. I was like, I've never owned Over the Top, believe it or not. It's such a cheesy film. I absolutely love this. When arm wrestling films are awesome, man. <laughs> arm wrestling, I wish they had made more of these things, man. I don't know. It's, a, it's, a, I love it. It's great. Now, here's a really awesome one, man. Bloody Friday. I believe this is a Russian film. I th or Ger it says German. Uh, German audio. Maybe it is German. Ralph Olsen. I thought it was Russian, but maybe it is German. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, this is awesome. Got this off the Mondo Macabro site. Really good shit right here, man. Um, comes with two versions. The theatrical slash Italian version. I guess it's Italian. I don't, I'm so confused, man. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's really late. Right now. I'm tired. But yeah, great action film. Bloody Friday. Check it out. And then last up for the update, man, that was like 80 movies. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I ripped through this, I think. Uh, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man. Um, Ruggiero Diodato, action film. 
I do have the Raro DVD of this, but I'm collecting this Italian collection line, so had to pick it up. And this was cheap, man. It was only like seven pounds. So can't beat that, man. Can't beat that. So that is going to do it for this monstrosity of an update, man. I can't believe how many Blu-rays I picked up. It was like 60 fucking Blu-rays. That's insane. Um, yeah, I'll be back making regular videos very, very soon. Next week, everything's going to kind of settle down for me. So I will be back doing some regular videos. So if you're looking for the shelf videos like everyone's been talking about, <laughs> they are coming. They are coming. I just, where that room's located, I can't shoot videos at all with the shit that goes on in my house. Ridiculous. So but anyways, guys, that is going to do it for the update. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will check you next month um, for another update. But before that, there'll be other videos. As usual, peace.